This video is about the badass Slavic sniper Ludmila Pavlichenko, also known for having one of the coolest and most frightening nicknames ever, Lady Death. Ludmila Pavlichenko, formerly known as Belova, was born to Russian parents in Belaya Tserkva, a relatively big city close to Ukraine's capital Kiev. She had a regular childhood, spending most of her time playing outside with friends. She was always first to jump into action if something happened, first to strike when confrontations occurred, and last to retreat if her gang of teenage kids were losing the fight. She was incredibly competitive and she proved it once her family moved to Kiev. And as just 14 years old, Ludmila enrolled in a shooting club, where she developed quickly into one of the best amateur sharpshooters around. She earned Voroshilov Sharpshooter badge and Marksman certificate. Just two years later, at the age of 16, she married the love of her life, Alexei Pavlichenko, and gave birth to a son, Rostislav. However, the marriage didn't last long, and soon after, she returned to live with her parents, while she was still enrolled at the local Kiev University. During her studies, she competed in numerous athletic activities and also enrolled in a military-style sniping school for half a year. You could say that her love for competition and shooting was undeniable. She was a force to be reckoned with. Ludmila led a relatively peaceful life. She was just a year away from earning her master's degree in history, when everything was about to change. In June 1941, Adolf Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa and the Wehrmacht began its largest invasion in the history of warfare aimed to take down the Soviet Union. It was one of the deadliest parts of the Second World War. Countless slaughterings of innocent people and massive military operations were launched at civilian areas. Lyudmila Pavlichenko was one of the very first volunteers to enroll into the army at the Odessa recruiting office. There she had to fight her first battle as in to change the mind of the register who pushed Ludmila to be the nurse. But she refused. She then took out all her medals from shooting competitions, shooting certificates and credentials. The register was in awe and quickly backed down. Ludmila was enrolled into the Red Army's 25th Rifle Division as a sniper. However, due to the lack of firearms, she was only given a frag grenade. She mentioned in her memoirs how frustrated and helpless she felt during the battle without having a gun. Observing her fellow comrades being massacred and not being able to help was a feeling that she never wanted to experience again. Soon, one of her fellow comrades was too injured to fight and he handed Ludmila his Mosin Nagant bolt action rifle. The invading Nazis didn't know it then, but their lives were about to become much more difficult as vengeful Ludmila Pavlichenko was now armed and ready to come down with a deadly precision upon them. Claiming her first kill, she described the feeling as baptism of fire, but then, with the coldest stoic tone possible, she referred to those two Romanian soldiers she just killed as mere trial shots. During the fierce fighting of Odessa, she claimed 187 confirmed kills in just her first 75 days on the job, earning her nickname Lady Death. She quickly became notorious and feared among Nazis, who even once offered to pay her, give her lots of chocolates and make her a German officer if she just gives up. Lyudmila was as disciplined and fearsome as one can get. Leaving the camp in the early hours of the morning and returning only at night, she would head to advanced position close to the enemy lines and lie motionless, waiting for an opportunity to shoot. 
You need a great self-control, willpower and endurance to lie 15 hours at a stretch without moving, she later wrote. When asked by one of her comrades about her feelings when she shoots, she stoically glanced over and said, The only feeling I have is the great satisfaction a hunter feels who has killed a beast of prey. However, Ludmila, despite her fearsome reputation, fell in love during these chaotic times of war. A love that was short-lived due to her lover dying in her arms after being injured in the battlefield, an event she never forgot. After the evacuation of Odessa, Ludmila headed to Sevastopol in Crimea, where she spent the next several months fighting for the city, preparing and training new snipers. She was such a deadly sniper that her confirmed count of kills was 309. In reality, this number could have been much higher and is rumored to be around 500, which would give her the title of the deadliest sniper to ever live, hand in hand with Simo Haiha, the White Death himself. Lyudmila was injured several times during the war, but the real dance with the grave came in June 1942, after she was struck in the face with a shrapnel from a mortal shell. When she was injured, the Soviet High Command ordered for her to be evacuated from Sevastopol via submarine. She was much more worth to the cause alive than dead. That was the power of her quick rise to the legendary fame, which the Soviet Union used to spread propaganda across the country. Later that year, Lyudmila Pavlichenko was sent to Canada and the United States for a publicity visit as a part of the Soviet Union's attempt to convince the other allies of the World War II to open the Second Front. She was the very first Soviet citizen to be received by the US President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Lyudmila quickly became good friends with the First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, who took her on the tour of 43 cities all across the US to give speeches and rally the population. There, still young and beautiful, Ludmila had to fight yet another battle against the old-school westernized sexism, because she was not taken seriously by the press. The journalists were speaking to one of the deadliest snipers of the war, yet they were only asking mocking questions such as, were you allowed to wear a makeup on the phone lines? Why is your skirt so long, it only makes you look fat? They ridiculed her quote-unquote lack of style and called her a girl sniper. She quickly shut them up after she stood up and said a sentence which is perfectly depicted in the following scene. Gentlemen, I am 25 years old and I have killed 309 fascist occupants by now. Do you think, gentlemen, that you have been hiding behind my back for too long. Her statement was met by an applause and an uproar of support. During her tour in the US, she often spoke of the lack of racial segregation within the Red Army and the gender equality. She inspired the American public so much that there were songs made about her. After the tour, Ludmila Pavlichenko was promoted to major and given the title Hero of the Soviet Union the country's highest military distinction. She also received the Order of Lenin twice, the country's highest civilian designation, while she spent the last years of the war training new aspiring snipers for the front lines. Ludmila Pavlichenko led a quiet life after the war, reuniting with her son and peacefully spending most of her years working as a historian. In 1957, former First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt was on a diplomatic visit of Moscow where she demanded to meet with Ludmila, the two reunited after so many years to laugh, catch up and remind themselves of summer they spent together touring the United States. Unfortunately, after witnessing so many war crimes, terrible acts against humanity and death of her loved one in her own arms, Ludmila Pavlichenko suffered from many years of PTSD and depression. She became an alcoholic and on the 10th of October 1974, Ludmila Pavlichenko passed away after suffering a stroke. Today, Ludmila Pavlichenko is remembered as not just the deadliest female sniper in the history, but as one of the deadliest snipers to ever scope this planet.
fearsome, stoic and precise. Lady Death. Miss Pavlichinko, well known to fame, Russia's your country, fighting's your game. The world will always love you for all time.